Fox 13 News at 10 starts now. The officers involved in a traffic stop that caused a man his life are now off the job tonight. What we know so far in the investigation next. Plus, a community comes together to honor the lives of students killed in a shooting. How these shooting victims were honored at tonight's basketball game. And a new sub-variant of coronavirus was detected in Arkansas. The concern one doctor has about the variant becoming a dominant strain in the natural state. Fox 13 News at 10 starts now with breaking news. Breaking news tonight on Fox 13 News at 10. Five MPD officers are now fired in the traffic stop in Hickory Hill that led to the death of Tyree Nichols. Memphis police just released this information just a couple of hours ago. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me for Fox 13 News at 10. I'm Noah Sershin and for Daryl and Darcy. Take a look at these photos of officers who were fired tonight. Tadarius Bean, who you see on your screen, was hired by the police department in August of 2020. The next officer that was terminated was Officer Demetrius Haley. He was also hired in August of 2020. Officer Desmond Mills Jr. has been on the force for almost six years. He was hired by MPD back in March of 2017. Officer Emmett Martin III was hired in March of 2018, and Officer Justin Smith was also hired in March of 2018. Fox 13's Kayla Solomon joins us live now from City Hall. And Kayla, the officers were fired, but no criminal charges have been filed. Right, those criminal charges would be left up to the office of District Attorney Steve Mulroy. Now, I spoke to him earlier this week about prosecution in this case, and he mentions that he plans to keep the promise he made during his campaign to take himself off the case when it comes to prosecuting any local law enforcement officers. In fact, he said in this case he plans to pass it off to his Justice Review Unit, which was just launched last month. The officers in this case are there on your screen. It's these five men, Officer Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, Emmett Martin, Desmond Mills Jr., and Justin Smith. In a statement, Police Chief C.J. Davis described the nature of this incident as egregious and said that it does not represent the department. Davis went on to say that these men violated multiple department policies, including excessive use of force and the duty to intervene. Before the announcement was officially made, state leaders who represent this area were all called to an emergency Zoom meeting just before 5 p.m. by Mayor Strickland's office to update them on the latest. I just, uh, we just want justice for the family. Uh, we want to, uh, again, make sure that, that, you know, transparency is the key. And we want to make sure that everyone is safe out there. So, so please, if you're going to protest, then please protest peacefully. The body cam footage in this case is set to be released early next week after both the Nichols family and attorney Ben Crump view them privately. Back to you. All right, that's Fox 13's Kayla Solomon starting our coverage off tonight from City Hall. Kayla, thanks. We are continuing to get responses from local leaders in the community surrounding this death and the recent termination of those five MPD officers. Fox 13's Lakia Scott joins us live tonight from the Breaking News Center. And Lakia, there are others weighing in on this latest action tonight. That is correct, and one of those responses is from the Memphis Police Association, and that statement reads in part, due to the ongoing criminal investigation, the Memphis Police Association will not comment on the termination of the officers in the Tyree Nichols case. The citizens of Memphis, and more importantly, the family of Mr. Nichols, deserve to know the complete account of the events leading up to his death and what may have contributed to it. Now, some other local leaders are also speaking out tonight, leaders like City Council, Council member JB Smiley tweeted, quote, Shelby County DA, you are up next. Hashtag Tyree Nichols and Reverend Earl Fisher of Abyssinian Missionary Baptist Church also taking to his Twitter saying, quote, now bring on the prosecuting charges, exclamation points. And of course, all of this on the heels of the death of Tyree Nichols and his family's plight for justice and answers. That's Fox 13's Lakia Scott reporting from the Breaking News Center tonight. Lakia, thanks. Let's recap all that we know in the death of Tyree Nichols. On January 7th, Nichols got into a confrontation with police on Rains and Ross Road. Three days later, Nichols died at St. Francis Hospital in critical condition after being beat by those five MPD officers. Protests have erupted as many were outraged over the lack of information MPD and the city were releasing. Tonight, we learned the five officers involved in this traffic stop have been fired. Body camera footage of this incident 
incident is set to be released sometime next week. Attorney Benjamin Crump says that he will come to Memphis Monday to view the footage with the family of Tyree Nichols. Stay with Fox 13 News for continuing coverage of this developing story on air, online, and of course on the Fox 13 News mobile app. And even more breaking news tonight, the man who U.S. Marshals were searching for following the murder of his ex-wife have been taken into custody. That's according to the Haywood County Sheriff's Office. Marshals offered a $5,000 reward for Kevin Watson. Now, he was wanted on a charge of first-degree murder after the Haywood County Sheriff's Office said it believes 34-year-old Brittany Watson, who has been missing for more than a week, is dead. Brittany Watson was reported missing after she was last seen on January 7th in Haywood County. Her ex-husband, Kevin Watson, was also missing and his truck was found abandoned in a wooded area there in Haywood County. Brittany Watson's last known location was at, 30, was at 3317 Hillville Loop on January 7th around noon. The sheriff's office also said that her truck was found with a flat tire when it was located. Kevin's truck was found in a different location in the Big Eddy area. Memphis police need your help tonight identifying a man who robbed a family dollar. This happened around 2 p.m. today. A male suspect entered the family dollar, showed a handgun to the clerk, and demanded money from the cash register. After taking the money, the man left the dollar store. Anyone with information about this incident should call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. An inmate was found dead in his Tupelo jail cell. Deputies at the Lafayette County Detention Center in Oxford, Mississippi, were called to the cell of a man who was unresponsive just before 6 tonight. The inmate was taken to Baptist Memorial Hospital. He was later pronounced dead. The Lafayette County Sheriff's Office, Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, and the Mississippi Department of Corrections are now conducting an investigation. There were no signs of foul play. The cause of this death will be determined by the Mississippi State Medical Examiner's Office. A chill has settled over the Mid-South tonight. It's not going to get much cooler than this, but some of us could dip below freezing. Fox 13 Chief Meteorologist Andrew Humphrey is live now in Severe Weather Center 13. And Andrew, is there going to be a warm-up any time in the forecast soon? You know, we'll see at least some sunshine for tomorrow. As far as temperatures go, we do rise above freezing for tomorrow up to seasonal averages for this time of year. That means a high temperature around 50 or 51 degrees for tomorrow afternoon. Currently, we're looking at 39 chilly degrees, nearly four degrees colder than what it was just 24 hours ago. We're seeing 30s strewn across much of the Mid-South. We're still holding on to 40s though in places like Oxford where it's now 42, while it's 32 over in Covington right at the freezing mark, two degrees below freezing in Dyersburg, 35 in Jonesboro. When you wake up tomorrow morning, we'll see some middle and upper 20s and low 30s across the area. Frosty spots as well. We're looking at clear skies overhead. No chance of rain or any precipitation for tonight and a light wind. So wind chills not as low as they would be if those winds were higher. We'll talk more about not just tomorrow afternoon that sunshine and highs around 51. When we reach that high temperature, it will be cloudier. Does that mean showers before the weekend is over? We'll talk more about that and your seven day forecast in minutes. Andrew, thanks. Three years after two children were killed at their home in a drive-by shooting, their school system is honoring them tonight. The deaths of 16-year-old Laquan Boyd and 6-year-old Ashlyn Luckett rocked the community back in January of 2020. At a special halftime ceremony tonight at the Collierville Lady Dragons basketball game, the team and the school's principal paid tribute to the children. Fox 13's Jack Billy was there, and he joins us now tonight live from Collierville with more. Jack, good evening. Yeah, good evening. At halftime, the team put on t-shirts with the letters LLQ and LLA printed on them. That's meant to stand for Long Live Quan and Long Live Ashlyn. Now, we heard from a relative who says tonight's tribute meant a great deal to the family. Once a dragon, always a dragon. They are still supporting them, yes. And, and you know, they're sitting up in heaven looking down on us, smiling, looking at all the support. And Annie Page, a relative of the children, says she had a special relationship with Ashlyn Luckett. She recalls how the six-year-old would come visit her at work. I would always have to run her down to get sugar and a hug. And once I did get it, I said, oh my goodness, you just made my day. And that just you put a smile on her face like I don't know what. It just made her day as well. But I missed that. She says the night they were taken is a night she'll never forget. Well, three years ago, I was at home and I learned overnight what had happened and my heart just sank. It just sank because Ashlyn was my girl. <laughs> she was my girl. And so was Quan. He was my boy, but Ashlyn was my heart. According to MPD, the uncle and niece were killed while inside their home in Hickory Hill. Luckett was a first grader at Sycamore Elementary and Boyd was a sophomore at Collierville High School. 
The crime brought dozens of police cars to the neighborhood, and a suspect still hasn't been charged in the case. Paige says the wait for answers over the last three years has been tough, but she tries to tell her family to focus on the positive memories and not the loss. I know that uh, a mom, a grandmother, a daddy, uh, Quan's mom, they miss them so, and it's sort of hard for them right now. It's been hard for the last three years, and I always tell them don't think about the bad things, think about the good things, think about the smiles that they had on their faces, you know. Now the team and the principal of Collierville High School presented the family with a check that's meant to go towards reward money for catching the people responsible. Anyone with information on the case is asked to reach out to Crime Stoppers. Back to you. That's Fox 13's Jack Bill. You're reporting live for us from Collierville. Jack, thanks. Before the holidays, we saw flu cases spiking, but now as we get further into the new year, some experts say that there's been a shift. Flu numbers have declined, but health officials are warning of a new subvariant of Omicron called Omicron XBB 1.5. Doctors say that this variant is more infectious than the other Omicron variants. Now, even though it's currently not the predominant strain, it's likely to become so in the next coming weeks. A proposed bill is in the work tonight that would set limitations for the recording of law enforcement activity throughout the state of Mississippi. If the bill is passed, anyone who was not the subject of police contact would not be able to record law enforcement activity without being a certain amount of feet away from an officer. The bill also states that if police activity is happening on private property, that the owner or someone that has authority to manage or control the property can record video from less than 15 feet away. Anyone who violates this bill will face fines or jail time. Coming up on Fox 13 News at 10, family is outraged after the death of their loved one by Mississippi Capitol Police. The outrage this death is causing as no one has heard anything from law enforcement. Plus, even though national data shows that juvenile crime is down, perception is quite the opposite. Why police say that there is more work to be done. And trash problems are continuing to pile up for Parkway Village residents. How you can help this community clean up. here on Box 13's Good Morning Memphis, we do more local news than anyone else. Because covering the stories that happen here is what helps you prepare. Reporters who are the first to know, bringing you fresh information like no one else can. Live updates from the day's biggest stories and what happened overnight. Taking you beyond the headlines with details that matter. We know you depend on us. It's why we're live everywhere to help you prepare. Wake up with us and start your day ready for anything. Box 13's Good Morning Memphis, weekdays from 4.30 to 10 a.m. This segment of today's broadcast is brought to you by Landers Buick GMC in South Haven. Family and friends are demanding answers from Mississippi Capitol Police over the death of Jalen Lewis. They held a protest at the Mississippi State Capitol today. The family has heard nothing from Capitol Police or the Department of Public Safety since his death. Jalen Lewis's death marks the fourth shooting in the last five months by Capitol Police, and Lewis's family simply wants answers. I just feel some type of way that no one has reached out to me or my family. I don't make this a career. This is not my, I don't bury children yearly. So I don't know what, how any of this is supposed to go or how this goes, but I know that somebody should at least try to contact us and say, and say something and give us something and no one has done that yet. So, and it hurts. It really hurts. The family has reached out to the Department of Justice asking for a federal investigation into the death of Jalen and other Capitol Police shooting incidents. First responders in Colorado are facing 32 combined charges in the death of Elijah McClain. The 23-year-old died in police custody after being violently arrested back in 2019. The officers and paramedics charged in his death were in court today. All five officers pleaded not guilty to those 32 counts. They were indicted last fall after an amended autopsy changed the 23-year-old's death from undetermined to complications of ketamine administration following a forcible restraint. Criminals seem to be getting younger and younger. Even though national data shows juvenile arrests are down, perception is quite the opposite. Local officials say that there is still a cause for alarm. Madison Rivera reports. After battling rising crime, the nation's capital is getting some reprieve. D.C. closed out 2022 with a 10% drop in homicides compared to the previous year. But local officials say they're tackling another emergency, violence among youth. 
and they argue access to illegal guns is to blame. A lot of them, their first offense, their first introduction into the criminal justice system has been a firearm-related offense, and that is, that is a very staggering uh, thing. Carjackings are also a problem. This brazen attack on a then-candidate for D.C. City Council last January fueled fears that more young people were committing crimes, a concern the police chief in neighboring Montgomery County shares. And although, yes, we've seen an increase with juveniles, Again, we've seen adults, again, be involved in these types of cases as well. However, Justice Department data shows the number of youths being arrested for violent crime reached a new low in 2020, dropping 67 percent since 2006. President Biden is crediting the efforts of local leaders. Many cities from Newark, New Jersey, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, <laughs> but all kidding aside, have made major investments in community violence intervention initiatives. These studies have shown in some cases they can reduce violent crime up to 60 percent, particularly among our youth. Still, police say there's more work to do. A large portion of where we have to really put our focus on prevention is helping young people understand how to better remediate problems. Overall, people younger than 18 accounted for 7 percent of all arrests for violent crime in 2020, falling from 14 percent in 2010. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Well, back here at home, one of the children charged in the murder of a White Haven pastor has been tried as an adult. Miguel Andrade was 15 at the time of the shooting. He is one of three people accused of shooting and killing Reverend Artura Easton Williams after carjacking her at her White Haven home. Memphis police said that two were arrested along with a 20-year-old after the pastor's car was found wrecked out at Lynchburg Street and Steuben Drive. The other teen pleaded guilty and surrendered to stay with child services until the age of 19. Andrade was given a $200,000 bond and transferred to adult court. A city councilman is taking matters into his own hands to help clean up the Bluff City. Ford Canale is sponsoring a cleanup event this weekend. He's inviting the community to help. Canale says that he's been complaining about vacant lots that has become illegal dumping sites in Parkway Village. The lot is behind Oakville Missionary Baptist Church on Knight Road. If he wants to help become a part of that cleanup, it starts tomorrow at 1 in the afternoon. Check this out here. Hundreds of golf balls have been washing up on California's Carmel River State Beach. The unusual winter storm appears to be responsible for funneling them down to the Carmel River and to the Pacific. Back-to-back -back atmospheric rivers have raised water levels, freeing the golf balls that may have been trapped in water hazards for years. Many appear to have originated from nearby Pebble Beach as the ninth and 10th holes have ocean views. Golfers who flocked to the beach say that it had been a ball bonanza with the majority of them in still very playable shape. On your Friday evening, I'm Fox 13 Chief Meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. A pleasant night so far with temperatures that are now in the 30s, so it is getting colder. Make sure those furnaces are working. Bring your pets and potted plants indoors. Winds at around 3 miles per hour, so at least wind chills and temperatures basically one in the same. But overnight lows will be near, if not below, the freezing mark. We're already seeing 30 degrees in Dyersburg. Right at the freezing mark in Covington at 32, now 30s in Corinth, also in Holly Springs at 39, Tunica checking in at 37 degrees. But we have high pressure in place, clear skies overhead. That means a lot of heat going out into space, one of the reasons why it's getting so much colder. And we have some clouds off to our west. Now those clouds don't make it in here until tomorrow afternoon. So we'll start with sunshine Saturday morning and end up with partly sunny skies during the afternoon. See little bits of green showing up here in western Arkansas tomorrow afternoon. Those are some rain showers that make it here in the Mid-South by tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. Same thing for Sunday morning, but on and off light rain is expected. Nothing too heavy, nothing severe. Just be careful on wet roadways, whether it's Saturday, Saturday night or as you're getting ready for services and going to them on Sunday morning. Let's fast forward into next week, shall we? Because we have a separate area of low pressure on the way and the chilly air will still be upon us. There's been a question over the past 24, 48 hours whether we'd see just rain or a mixture of rain and snow. Well, it looks like that icy or wintry mix is going to be north and west of the Mid-South. That spells good news. But we're still looking at chilly and wet conditions Tuesday into Wednesday of next week. Now, this all could change, so still keep it tuned right here to Fox 13 News and our weather forecast. We've got it updated for you tomorrow morning and throughout the entire weekend. We've got 33 degrees overnight, clear and cold, winds light at around 2, six, two to 6 miles per hour. Sunrise on your Saturday is at 7.06. During the day on Saturday, sunshine in the morning, partly sunny in the afternoon, and a seasonable chill in the air still continues. Highs up to around 50 or 51. 
there's that rain that comes in Saturday night into Sunday. Because of all the cloud cover on Sunday, it's the chillier, wetter day out of the two. Highs only up to around 48 degrees. But we've got sunshine coming back for your Monday. After that, that second area of low pressure arrives. Looks like chilly rain showers on your Tuesday before sunshine returns with temperatures in the 40s by late next week. That is looking at your weather forecast. Andrew thinks we're continuing to stay on top of breaking news. Five officers have been fired in the deadly beating of Tyree Nichols. We'll have more on the investigation next. Stay with us. There's a lot of momentum in Memphis. With new people, businesses, and events every day, our city just keeps getting better and better. There's opportunities to grow your career. And to eat, drink, or just see something new. Great things happening right here at home, and we're going to tell you about them in Memphis Momentum. Every day on Fox 13 News. Constantly tracking upcoming severe weather and how it will impact you. Weekdays from 4.30 to 10 a.m. This is breaking news. We're still continuing to stay on top of that breaking news. Five officers are now terminated almost two weeks after a traffic stop in Hickory Hill, leading to the death of Tyree Nichols. Memphis police releasing that five officers were fired. Let's get back to Fox 13's Kayla Solomon, who joins us live from City Hall. And Kayla, those officers were fired, but no charges have been filed. That's right, those criminal charges would be coming from the district attorney's office. Now, as you mentioned, some of the reasons listed for the firings were included in that announcement tonight. Chief C.J. Davis cited some of those reasons being excessive use of force and also that there was the duty to intervene and the officers did not do that according to their internal investigation. Now, we were told earlier this week that the hearing would happen today. Of course, this is the conclusion of that. Now, what comes next? Early Early next week, we're expecting to see the body cam footage. All the offices have said they plan to release it after the Nichols family and attorney Ben Crump view the body camera footage separately and privately. Then it will be released to the public. District Attorney Steve Mulroy said earlier this week that the plan is to release it in its entirety. No edits. Again, we'll be looking out for that next week. That's Fox 13's Kayla Solomon reporting for us tonight from City Hall. Kayla, thanks. An Ohio police officer has been put on administrative leave after a video showed him punching a black woman several times after she was taken into custody following a dispute over extra cheese on a Big Mac at McDonald's. The incident happened in Butler Township, Ohio. It began after Latika Hancock bought a Big Mac and returned to the restaurant a short time later because it did not have the extra cheese she had paid for. Hancock said that a restaurant worker asked another employee to remake her burger, but that person later asked Hancock to pay more for the extra cheese. Hancock said that she had already paid for it and asked for a refund, which she said she eventually received. Hancock said that she was then told by police, she was then told that police had been called and was asked to leave the restaurant. Sergeant Todd Stanley and Tim Zellers responded there and approached Hancock, who spoke with them about what had occurred. One of the officers asked Hancock for her driver's license. Authorities say Hancock told them that she didn't have one and refused to provide her identification. The exchange soon became heated, and one of the officers decided to place Hancock under arrest. The officer said Hancock resisted arrest, and Stanley eventually hit Hancock on the right side of the face. Hancock was then placed in handcuffs, put into a police cruiser, and charged with resisting arrest and three other minor counts. Authorities say Hancock was bleeding from her mouth and was then treated by an EMT. Still to come on Fox 13 News at 10, you can live like a champion for the right price. We'll take you inside Deion Sanders' former home that's a prime time piece of real estate. Stay with us. rise in aggressive driving across Memphis and a radical change by police is putting the brakes on enforcing traffic violations Wednesday in a Fox 13 investigation I comb through years of records to see if a change in policy has made our streets more dangerous I sit down with MPD's traffic commander who says the number of tickets they're writing doesn't tell the full story we have less fatalities less hit and run Wednesday at 9 45 on Fox 13 News Deion Sanders' home in Madison County, Mississippi, is now officially on the market following his exit from Jackson State. Joseph Doring takes a look at this prime piece of real estate. What's going on, everybody? I'm Joseph Doring, and welcome to Deion Sanders' former home. And just for the small primetime price of $1.5 million, you too can own this beautiful home in Canton, Mississippi. Sanders may have already left Jackson State University, but he still has one thing left to accomplish 
That's why he's given the green light to sisters Duana and Valicia Stanley to sell his massive 42-acre property. The day that we saw that they were on the plane, we were like, hey, when Dion gets ready to sell his house, you know, put us in the game, put coach. Us in the game coach. The house was built in 2011 and features five bedrooms and six bathrooms. The property also has a lake and a four-stable barn. They say having the opportunity to sell such a large property means much more than just getting to sell Primetime's house. As minority brokers and minority real estate agents, we really don't get an opportunity to sell a lot of luxury real estate. So for us, for him to trust his property in our company's hand, it really means a lot. Aside from Thursday night's grand open house event, the two sisters say they are taking Sanders' privacy very seriously and that house tours are exclusive from here on out. We're doing things to protect his privacy as far as those who can come view the house. You just can't up and say, hey, I want to see the house. You actually have to be a pre-approved buyer and show proof of funds just to protect his privacy. Pizza Hut may have broken the record for the world's largest pizza on Wednesday. Workers covered much of the Los Angeles Convention Center floor with more than 14,000 square feet of dough, sauce, and cheese. It was so big that they even had to bake it in sections over the course of several hours. Later, the pizza was donated to several charities. The event celebrated the return of Big New Yorker to Pizza Hut's menu. It's unclear if the Guinness certified the pizza as the world's largest, but the record holder is a 13,000 square foot pizza made in Italy in 2012. We have chilly conditions out there now. It gets colder overnight. Overnight lows will be down to around 33 degrees, so clear and cold, but it also remains dry. Sunrise on your Saturday is at 7.06. Now for the day on Saturday, an absolutely beautiful day, especially in the morning with all that sunshine, but bundle up before heading out. Seasonably chilly with highs around 50 to 51 degrees. Rain showers move in Saturday night and into Sunday. So wet conditions on area roads tomorrow night and into Sunday morning as you get ready for services. Highs only in the 40s with all that cloud cover. Then we're looking at sunshine coming back on your Monday and next week, another chance of precipitation Tuesday and into Wednesday. Andrew, thanks. Well, that does it for Fox 13 News at 10. We thank you for choosing us tonight. Remember, you can get breaking news updates anytime on our mobile and streaming apps. Just search for Fox 13 News on Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV. Access Hollywood is next. Good morning, Memphis begins tomorrow at 7 a.m. with Dakari Turner and meteorologist Chelsea Chandler. Good night.